Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are going to once again be taking that statement quite literally, as we choose not to focus on something relevant, but instead to examine some of the finest facial hair in the series, specifically moustaches. Now there is a prominent belief out there that a moustache can come to define a person, and while that may or may not be true, we can certainly tell a lot about someone by how they choose to wear and maintain their facial growth, and One Piece characters are certainly no exception to that. The criteria for this list is as follows. A a moustache is defined as a segment of hair that grows upon the upper lip. Hair originating from anywhere else will not be tolerated at all. However, a character does not have to own a moustache exclusively, but only that portion will be eligible for examination. Furthermore, all moustaches on this list must, and I cannot emphasize this enough, must be canon, because the day this world starts taking filler fashion seriously is going to herald in a dark age for the entirety of mankind. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top five marvelous moustaches in One Piece. Number five. Dracul Mihawk. Not only is he the world's greatest swordsman, but Mihawk reigns supreme as a champion of style, and his mustache choice hammers this point home. These two boomerang-like structures are a simple and effective crowning feature upon his face that even evoke the fact that he is a swordsman through their perceived sharpness. Actually, you know what? I bet if Mihawk really wanted to, he could easily cut steel with this supreme lip foliage. And yes, I know I said that we'd be ignoring hair generated from elsewhere, but I do have to point out how effectively Mihawk's mo blends in with the rest of his face, crafting a balanced and intimidating look. And if you don't believe that it's the moustache that makes Mihawk intimidating, then well, just take a look at this. Good. God. Now you see this guy, he wouldn't even be capable of cutting butter with a hot knife. But this guy, this is the world's greatest swordsman. It's simply amazing what a moustache can do. Number four, Vice Admiral Momonga. Here we have an example of a pure moustache, and what I mean by that is a sector of whiskers that have been allowed to grow against the blank canvas of a face with absolutely no competing elements in the form of any other hair around it. In fact, even Momonga's head is fairly devoid of hair for the most part, and what that accomplishes is making a centerpiece of the moustache. What we have here is the general concept of Mihawk sharp boomerang, but taken to a whole new level. Thicker, luxurious, and fitting of someone in a position of command. I mean, really, would you take orders from this guy? <laughs> he doesn't even have a mouth. What a what a loser. But then you adorn this face with one handy lip rug and bam, he could be a World War II general. It just evokes pure authority. In fact, it's so good that Momonga has a doppelganger wandering around the One Piece world sporting his trademark lip toupee and attempting to use it to gain some sort of authority amongst the Marines. And it would appear to have worked. But you know what they say, imitation is the best form of flattery and it just goes to show how magnificent this moustache really is. Number three. Goal D. Roger. Now this is probably one of the most iconic nose neighbors in the entire series. Its curvy nature expands a fair way beyond the bounds of Roger's face, and really, if you asked a group of people to draw Roger from memory, then this mustache would probably be one of the only aspects they got correct, or close to correct. That's how much it has come to define the Pirate King. I mean, just look at what Roger would look like without it. Hashtag not my Pirate King. In fact, just as the straw hat is the crowning feature of Luffy's Jolly Roger, the symbol of the Roger Pirate is simply a skull donning a moustache. A weird sort of like double moustache actually. Although interestingly enough, this facial feature was at one point very much in danger of not making this list at all. As originally Oda had intended for this not to be a moustache at all, but instead to be some very expansive nose hair. And what a great loss to the realm of flavor savers that would have been. And also just another fun fact right here, this was indeed the very first moustache to appear in One Piece, paving the way for all future mouth brows to take the stage. So it certainly deserves a little mention here. Number two, Kaido. Now this mustache is legitimately crazy. It's like what Rogers would have become had it been given some form of growth hormone and allowed to expand far beyond the realms of a simple mo. Kaido's mustache is actually so long that it is very difficult to find a picture showcasing the whole thing. And it becomes even more difficult once a certain spoiler from the Wano arc comes into consideration. Although there is one key technical difference between this and Rogers mustache being that Kaido's mustache is a Fu Manchu, which is categorized by its spawning from the sides of the mouth rather than the center above the lip. Stereotypically used to designate an Asian or more specifically Chinese style. In fact, they are even worn by myth Chinese dragons. However, unlike the other candidates on this list, I cannot say that this moustache makes Kaido. Without it, he would be every bit as intimidating, with the moustache acting as more of an ornamental feature. But it really does not get the credit it deserves. It's like having a solid gold toilet in a mansion. I mean, if you removed it, then the mansion itself wouldn't suffer. But if you put that gold toilet in a regular old apartment, then it would become the crowning feature. It's a damn fine mo and well worthy of recognition. However, there is still one moustache that stands atop all. Number one, 
Whitebeard. Rather controversially in the English language anyway, Whitebeard is not in fact the owner of a beard. However, what he lacks in beardery, he shoves full force into his moustache, which also happens to be the only one on the list today that rises to the sky instead of falling to the ground. A nice little touch that allows it to be incredibly unique despite its theoretical simplicity. In fact, this moustache is so absurdly powerful that it has warped the very fabric of Whitebeard as revealed in an SBS segment where a fan asked why Whitebeard wears a bandana. As it turns out, it's because his hair cannot help but imitate the glory of the moustache. But even after assuming the same shape, it just doesn't quite have the X factor of Whitebeard's fantastic follicle masterpiece. And as we've done so many times on this list, let us examine the man without the mo. This is a mere man. This is the strongest man in the world. Coincidence? I think not. And that is why the Whitebeard moustache reigns supreme in the number one spot on this list. And that pretty much does it for the top five marvelous mustaches in one piece. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, or other miscellaneous items, with proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own favorite mustaches in the series. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.